All right, kia ora. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm not only stoked to be talking alongside uh, Matt and the man himself, Jeff, but also to see so many people who are so keen to hike Te Aro. I think it's really exciting. Um, yeah, my name is Eleanor or Tip Tap, and uh, in 2019, I went and hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. So that's the trail that goes from Mexico to Canada, uh, 4,270 kilometers in length. It took me about four and a half months to do. Uh, and along the way, the whole time, every time someone find, found out I was from New Zealand, they would ask, have you hiked Te Araroa? To which I would always reply, no. Uh, and to my surprise, you know, all these people knew about this trail that was in my own backyard that I hadn't even really thought about doing. Um, and I think that's pretty natural as Kiwis, you know, we kind of, we take for granted being here sometimes and we kind of prioritize going elsewhere. Uh, if only there was some kind of, I don't know, worldwide global pandemic to make it so that, you know, we had no option. Uh, yeah, so COVID was exactly the thing that kind of instigated me to prioritize hiking this trail in my own backyard. And uh, yeah, I was very, very stoked that I did. Um, yeah, so... What was I going to say next? I, I didn't prepare cue cards, so I'm like, oh god. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, oh, I, don't, I don't think I'm there yet. I'm almost there. I think, um, yeah, so I, yeah, went and hiked Te Araroa. I think because I hiked, oh, what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so because I hiked the PCT and hiked Te Araroa, I kind of have this perspective of, um, how Te Araroa is unique as a through hike and I was curious if anyone else in the room has hiked another trail maybe not Te Araroa but something overseas Ooh, what, it, what okay what have you hiked um, the Tour du Mont Blanc. oh oh my gosh amazing uh, Dennis a little bit of the PCT yeah old mate here actually picked me up at a trailhead uh, was it Onion Valley, Onion Valley. So, such a small world, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, no, I think, what's cool, there's you know, a bunch of people here who've hiked uh, different trails overseas. Um, but yeah, I do apologize. I think I'm gonna be comparing it a lot to the PCT. So, uh, I mean, if you look under your chairs, there's, uh, you can, you'll see shot glasses, so you can take a shot every time. Um, no, okay, I haven't actually done that. Okay, let's, I'm uh, ready. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so the way Te Araroa is unique as a through hike, uh, number one being Kiwis, as in the people. So I think I'm going to 100% be generalizing here, but I think we as Kiwis are generally a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed, and I think that reflects in the culture um, of hikers hiking the trail. When I did the PCT, I definitely got sucked into a little bit of the, uh, I guess, competitive nature of the trail um, and you know it becomes all about hiking these big days where I felt like on Te Araroa it was really encouraged to just be more relaxed and be more chill and um, yeah I found that really special uh, yeah I think that <laughs> um, yeah wildlife or <laughs> lack thereof so I think so on the PCT I carried a beer canister for one of the sections uh, to walk through the Sierra Nevada. And I know that sounds like something that carries your beer, I wish. No, it was to store your food. So you would have to, you know, store all your food and place it 100 meters away from your tent. Uh, otherwise, you know, a beer might be curious and come at your food and may, maybe eat you. Um, we don't have to worry about that here, which it was really nice. We also don't have to worry about mountain lions or snakes uh, or, yeah, other things like that. But we do have to worry about cows. And I mean, I do have a mild phobia, so that <coughs> maybe affects how I view walking through um, fields of cows, but um, they are a little bit terrifying. I think somebody was, you will constantly see posts on the Facebook group about people who are stuck in fields with cows. I think somebody was gonna actually introduce a course to um, learn how to do uh, a field crossing. I would have 100% taken that course. Um, <laughs> 
No, they're fine though. The thing is though, they, they won't eat you. Uh, maybe, I think. Um, and yeah, so cows are probably the scariest top of the list. And there was also, you know, possums and weka. Uh, they're, just, they're just annoying though. So again, they won't eat you. Um, but yeah, one, something really special about Te Aroa is the uh, New Zealand bird song. And I think if I'd done one thing before preparing to hike the TA was kind of learn more about what the birds were just so I could kind of listen out and feel like Snow White and, you know, identify each bird. Uh, yeah, so that is something special. Um, yeah, no, I, I had to include this and I think, um, so I'm sorry, I apologize if you're not a fan of Lord of the Rings, but uh, I think whenever I'm hiking, uh, especially even when I'm hiking overseas, I will tend to listen to uh, soundtracks from Lord of the Rings. And it's kind of a special thing to be able to walk kind of alongside uh, places where they did film Lord of the Rings and um, gambling in the back, uh, Bruce here over there, um, to be able to play that and uh, really, I don't know, feel connected to the films, especially if you, yeah, you were a big fan. Uh, so if you were curious as to specific places, just let me know afterwards. I'll, I'll tell you where they are. Uh, Mavora Lakes, amazing. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, koha and toitu te whenua. So I think um, this is something really special about hiking in New Zealand is that, you know, there is the concept of uh, toitu te whenua, which uh, I think, it's, it's similar to um, Leave No Trace. I have the direct translation and <laughs> I'm so nervous that I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's Let the Permanence of the Land Remain Intact. And um, I think that really feeds into, um, yeah, what makes it special here uh, and interweaves with the Leave No Trace principles, you know, leaving something as you found it. Uh, the concept of koha, uh, this Māori concept, you know, it is uh, kind of, you know, the concept of giving a gift, but it's kind of more than that. It is illustrating um, your gratitude towards someone. And that can be kind of in the form of money, a gift, uh, doing chores. It can be anything as long as you're kind of providing, showing your gratitude. Uh, and I think the thing with koha is that it's never expected from Trail Angels. Oh, I don't think I've talked about Trail Angels. So a massive element of Te Araroa is your interactions with the Trail Angels. And they will host you, they will feed you, and they don't expect anything in return. But um, with this whole concept of koha, you know, it's, again, you want to leave something as you found it. So if you were taking and receiving something from someone, um, you know, it's really important to give that back. And oftentimes it's through um, some form of koha. Yeah, so age. Now, um, to put things in perspective, the fact that we're in the room as the man who put this trail together is, it's not a small deal. You know, the PCT, uh, that, to put things in perspective, that was formed as a National Scenic Trail in 1968. So I think it's got about 43 years on Te Araroa. So this trail is really young. It's still developing. And that's not necessarily uh, a bad thing. Um, every year it will improve. Every year there will be less roads to walk. But every year there will also be more people walking it. So you kind of get a gauge of what kind of experience you want to have and when you want to prioritize doing it. Um, I personally think any time within the next couple of years is <laughs> perfect. Oh, you can't really, I don't know if you can see it. Um, <laughs> I claim to never get sunburnt, uh, but yeah, sunscreen is obviously very important when you're walking and exposed to the sun that, for that many hours a day. Um, I think in comparison to the PCT hiking, Te Araroa, I definitely allowed for more time with the weather. Um, I definitely let that uh, not dictate, but I planned more around it because as you'll find as you get further south in the South Island, uh, yeah, the uh, rivers are severely impacted by the amount of rainfall. So you definitely, I definitely was paying so much more attention to that. I would either push 
uh, ahead to get in front of the rain or I would just chill out and you know relax in town to allow it to pass so that was a big thing and a big uh, factor that I found and it's just you know it became about allowing that time and being a little bit more flexible um, yeah the hut system yeah this is something that's so special and honestly um, I mean there's not much to say about it it's, except that it is um, an incredible system we have uh, I think because I hiked in the year of COVID, there were less people on the trail. So it did mean that we probably didn't have to worry as much about not getting beds. Uh, even so, you know, just the experience of going in there and putting, um, having a fire, if the hut does have a fireplace, um, and just kind of all snuggling in, it's, um, yeah, a really special part of the experience. Because I guess otherwise, um, if I compare to the PCD, you know, you're always in, you're camping in your tent. In this experience, you know, at the end of the day, you can have those chats and um, eat your food together. And um, yeah, I found that really special. Um, yeah, okay. It's more than a through hike and this might get a little woo woo, but just bear with me. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, the PCD was a complete wilderness trail. So um, as Matt was saying, it was kind of more uh, consistent. It was a single, most of the time it was a single uh, path trail. So it was a lot easier to actually get bored. Uh, Te Araro is changing all the time. I mean, you literally start on a beach and I don't know, and yeah, if that doesn't say anything about how diverse it is, um, I'm not too sure what else. And like this is paddling down the Whanganui River. Uh, you know, you cross a ferry or you take the ferry to cross the strait and that's part of the hike. It's, it's technically, literally impossible to have a uh, continuous footpath, which people get really obsessed with, um, with overseas hikes. Uh, and I think it really encourages the sense of kind of uh, I have to say it, but hike your own hike, you know, tramp your own tramp. You really get to determine how you want the experience to be. Um, and that makes it really special. You know, you don't need to let others dictate what your hike looks like. Um, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Just choose how you want your experience to be and you will love it, you know, regardless of what everyone else is doing. Um, and so, Yes, it will change your relationship with Aotearoa. I think it will change, it will deepen your relationship uh, with yourself. It will change your perspective. Um, it will shift your priorities or kind of maybe will make you feel a little bit like Matrix, <laughs> Neo who's woken up uh, from the Matrix and, you know, has woken up to this, the world that's true and real. Um, and what else? It, uh... Let me just refer to my no. <laughs> um, okay, that's all right. So yeah, they um, they say your first through hike is like your first love, and so if this is going to be your first through hike, oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> um, if this is going to be your first through hike, I am so so excited and happy for you. Uh, I'm also just so, so sorry for you all. Uh, it will ruin you. Um, look at me, I, yeah, I'm two through hikes down and probably no signs of stopping. Um, and <laughs> one last thing. Uh, oh yes, okay. So yeah, tonight is about inspiring you all to hike Te Araro. Uh, the reality is I don't really need to say anything. The fact that you are all here tonight is kind of means it's already too late for you all. Uh, <laughs> the seed has been planted, so it's kind of inevitable now. So what I would say is kind of just embrace the tumble down the rabbit hole and just go for it and, you know, do it because you won't be able to... I had one last line! Oh my god. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Because there's no going back until you do it. And that is me. <laughs>